Well, good evening, afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Strong Man Personal Finance. Oh my God, does the weather suck in Hampton Roads? I am not happy. Anyway, we're gonna talk about Jeremy Lefebvre, who apparently is going heavy into cash. That's right. Instead of investing in stocks, putting all his money in stocks, stoinks, because he's a he's a genius, of course. He's deciding to put a lot of cash on the sidelines. And we got to address some of the things that he said in that video because some of the things that came out of his disgusting, lying, grifting shark mouth were absolutely the most dumbest things I ever heard in my entire life. So first of all, why does a stock investor go into cash? Well, if you're somebody that thinks you can, you know, time the market perfectly and you don't really believe in efficient markets and you think you're a genius and obviously you're smarter than the market because the market's just composed of, you know, the collective wisdom of all the participants. Obviously, you're going to hold cash because you're going to wait for an opportunity to buy something at a good valuation, right? Well, let's address what Jeremy said. So Jeremy is looking at the S&P 500. He's looking at the NASDAQ. You know, he's looking at whatever, and he's saying, oh my God, the PE, the price to earnings ratio, or according to Jeremy, the earnings to price ratio, is very high. Oh my God, the PE compared to historic norms is very high for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And because of that, Jeremy, who's looking at an index, decides to not buy individual stocks because the price to earnings ratio is high on the S&P 500. Because nothing is easier than investing. All you have to do is look at the price to earnings ratio. Now, PE is just a metric, okay? All it does is it says, here's how much you are paying for a dollar of past earnings. P -p 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 past. Companies with high PE ratios are probably growing quickly, or there's some kind of, I don't know, accounting adjustment that happened in the last couple of quarters that could have made the PE what it is. But you can't just look at a PE ratio and say, oh, it's overvalued, bro. It's easy, bro. It's overvalued, bro. That's not how it freaking works because some companies are growing faster and you have to pay a premium for that growth, okay? But Jeremy, he's looking at the SP500 and he's like, oh, it's overvalued. But here's the funny thing. Didn't Jeremy buy Tesla, which at one point had a PE of 1800? And didn't Jeremy just buy Nvidia, which has a PE of God knows what? <laughs> he is such a freaking moron, okay? It makes absolutely no sense if you're a stock picker to go off the PE ratio of the or the forward PE ratio, which is just a guess of the S&P 500 to shape your investing strategy. Now, the other justification that he did is he's saying that he's on a higher plane of investing. OK, he's like at the beginning of the video, he was like, you know, if you have less than one hundred thousand dollars, just be fully invested. OK, just buy and buy and buy. But once you get to my level and he pulls up his like grift account, which is basically all the money he made from scamming people. And he says, oh, I've got like two million in my public account. Oh, I'm so successful. I just scammed a bunch of people. And he's like, oh, I'm on a different plane of existence. So I, I as a sophisticated, you know, leveled up investor, I need to have cash because that's what sophisticated leveled up investors do. Well, I have a slight disagreement with that, Jeremy. You know, I have over $100,000 in my investment account. And uh, I'm still 100% invested. I mean, I have some cash for like emergency savings. And just because I have more money doesn't mean that I change my strategy. I I'm trying to understand how this works. If I had $10 million, I would be probably 95 to 100% VT. If I had $100 million, I'd probably be 95 to 100% VT. Why does the strategy have to change just because you have more money in your account. That makes no sense whatsoever. The only time you need cash is if you need money soon. If you need money in the next couple of years, okay, maybe cash isn't such a bad idea. But even if you're a billionaire, why not be fully invested? Because your expected returns are probably higher <laughs> investing in stocks 
than they are holding a treasury, which is paying good interest now, but that'll drop once they start cutting rates eventually. Uh, of course, you're going to get higher returns in the long run. So unless you need cash, you need to spend money soon, you should not be in cash. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your portfolio. I 100% guarantee you. I will almost be fully invested in stocks my entire life, but I will have some treasuries in retirement because I'll need the money soon. That's the only reason you should be in cash. And then he says, well, I need to, I need some cash because I'm going to buy investing properties because as a genius investor, I just have to buy a new house every couple of years because that's what you do. He's like playing this role of like this like rich person and like what do rich people do? They they move in and out of stocks and they hold cash and they go and they buy this and they buy rental properties or whatever. And it's like why do you have to buy property? Can someone explain to me why you need to buy another house? If you live in a house and it fits your family and it suits your needs, why do you have to go buy a house? But that's just just uh, I need to buy property because that's just what I do. I just need to buy property. I'm like no you don't. You have enough diversification and decent expected returns buying stocks. Oh, and they're liquid and they don't cost you money. Well, unless you buy clown stocks. Homes are expensive. I know, I own one, okay? They're not a freaking investment. Oh, just rent them, bro. Yeah, it's so easy. Just rent a bunch of stupid tenants, okay? And then the last, one of the other reasons he gives is he's like, well, uh, treasuries and CDs are paying four or 5% interest. They've been paying that for the past, what, year and a half, two years? And now you're finally realizing that they're paying interest? Wow. You know why they're paying interest? Partially because of inflation. That's right. The interest rates, they, as inflation goes up, people demand higher interest rates. But your real return probably isn't that great on these freaking CDs and treasuries that you're holding, okay? <laughs> this guy is such an idiot. Buying a treasury is the safest thing you can do. That's why you're not compensated as well as if you bought a stock which is highly volatile or a, you know an index which is more volatile because the returns aren't as guaranteed but you can't just say oh i'm rich and i'm you know i'm getting four percent here well yeah you're getting four percent on an extremely safe asset so theoretically the prices of the index the stock index are they're gonna be, it's gonna be pricey that you have higher expected returns because you need to be compensated for the risk part of the discount rate of uh when you discount on a company is the freaking uh the risk-free rate of return, <laughs> which is treasuries or, you know, government debt, okay? So overall, once again, Jeremy, you know, he paints this illusion that there's like different levels of investing. There's not, okay? The the 100%, you know, stock invested index strategy, low costs, high expected returns. You don't take risk. You don't gamble. You're not a freaking degenerate. You stay the course. That works at whatever, you know, level you are. I will always have VT, always, I'm not gonna, if I get big on YouTube, I'm not just gonna start start buying properties because that's what rich people do. And I'm not gonna start churning my portfolio or going to cash, then going back into investing and then going back into cash just because that's what rich people do. Okay, that, that's a it's, a, it's a joke. So once again, Jeremy proves he's a freaking moron. But uh, <laughs> all right, guys, I'm gonna go eat. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Cheers.